axiology. What is it? In this video, I want to talk with you about axiology, which is all about the studying of values. So we're going to talk about the nature of value. I'll talk about different ways to think about value as a concept. I also want to give you different examples of when axiology would even come up. For example, in ethics or in aesthetics. I also want to give you some examples, in case this is interesting to you, of who to read or what to read. So let's get started. How do we even get the word axiology? They come from root words. This one is Greek and this one is the word in French and that's how we get this word in English. This ology is the science of or the logic of and then this axio just comes from these roots. When you're looking at American authors writing, you can see that in the 20s and in the late 30s we have Perry and Dewey who wrote about value theory. They wrote in axiology, but actually the thinking about value theory came long before these scholars. But wait, what are we even studying when we're studying axiology? We're studying the idea of what has value, how it has value, in other words, the origin of value itself, and how to decide what has more value than another thing that has value? Let's take that question. What has value? In other words, what is valuable? What are you able to value? What is worthy, in other words? What has worth? What is it that makes a thing that is valuable valuable. What is it that makes something that you think is important or worthy or valuable actually important or worthy or valuable? And this one is all about the origin. This one is all about the nature. Nature. So what is value and what has value versus what gives something value? Where does the value of something come from? These are very different kinds of questions. We can also be talking about a third thing. In addition to what value is and where it comes from, we can take the idea of value itself and then break it apart into different kinds of value. For instance, intrinsic value versus instrumental value. Instrumental value has that word instrument in it and that's exactly right if you're thinking that it's the kind of thing that has worthiness because of what it can do for you as a tool. Isn't it true that some things are valuable or worthy or important not for what they are themselves but instead for what they can do or get you. As a means. Something that has instrumental value is valuable or worthy or important or good because of what it can do for you, because of the path that it allows you to take towards something else, towards an end that you have or a goal that you have. Whereas something with intrinsic value is important or worthy or valuable because of the goal of just having it. It is the goal itself. It's not valuable because it gets you something you want. It's valuable because it is indeed itself the goal. There's differences between kinds of value because some things are valuable because of what they can get you as a means, whereas other things are valuable because of what they are themselves as the end itself. And so this is a third different way to look at value. Let's talk about a fourth different way to think about value. In philosophy, you've might, you might have heard this word, ethics. You might have heard this word, aesthetics. These two are different subfields in philosophy. In ethics, you are learning all about what is righteous and what is impermissible, good and bad. How do you make claims 
about what would be the wrong thing to do without values. You wouldn't be able to do that. In ethics, you need an underlying axiology. You need an underlying theory of what is valuable. For example, if you want to argue in ethics that slavery is wrong, it's probably implicitly or explicitly underpinned by the idea that, fe- that freedom is good. Because you might say something like, we value autonomy or freedom, you can use that value to justify your arguments where your conclusion, that's the symbol for conclusion in logic, is that something that takes away freedom would be bad. And therefore you might say something like, slavery is unethical. The point here with this example is that in ethics, when you're talking about what you should and should not do and you're making normative claims, there is in the background an understanding of what's valuable. And if you don't value anything, then you don't have something according to which something is wrong. And so in ethics, axiology would come up. The same thing is true in aesthetics. In aesthetics, you're studying art and what is beautiful uh, versus what is ugly or disgusting. And in aesthetics, somebody might argue that a particular painting is good or beautiful, that a particular song or poem or monologue is beautiful. And that can only be done, like in ethics, with some kind of axiology in the background. I'll leave you with one more thing. And that's if you're interested in learning more about values, you might go to original authors that built this up as its own subfield in philosophy. Nietzsche is talking all about your values and morality. Brentrano is talking all about values and your ecology. And Ehrenfels is talking all about values and interests or Um, maybe a better word than interests here would be desires. And that is going to be a little bit different than what Bertrano mean when he's talking about psychological states. So if you're interested in looking at primary sources, check out these three authors, all whom wrote in the 1880s.